So Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, Rasulullah, wa So in today's uh, reminder, it's going to be slightly different in that we're not going to look at an ayah today or a set of ayat, but really I want to remind myself and yourself uh, about the importance of Jumu'ah. Um, tonight is of course the night of Jumu'ah, and in Islam the night precedes the day. Um, and Jumu'ah is uh, of course a very blessed time for the believers. As we've said in previous reminders, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives virtue um, to certain things over other things. So certain places have virtue over other places. Yes, we said Mecca has virtue over, uh, or Masjid al-Haram has virtue over all other masajid. Um, we said that certain Anbiya were given fadl, virtue over other Anbiya. And the Imam of the Anbiya being the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We also said that the revelation are not all the same, that the Quran is the greatest of revelation. Jibreel is the greatest of, um, uh, of angels. Um, and he was the one who brought down the revelation, etc. And similarly, all the days aren't equal. Okay, Jumu'ah is given virtue over all other days in the week. And the Prophet Sallallahu he said, خَيْرُ يَوْمٍ طَلْعَتْ عَلَيْهِ الشَّمْسِ That the best day in which the sun rises is Yawm al-Jumu'ah, the day of Jumu'ah. And it was on the day of Jumu'ah that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala created Adam Alayhi Salaam. It was on the day of Jumu'ah that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala um, entered Adam Alayhi Salaam into paradise. It was on the day of Jumu'ah that he was taken out of paradise. It was on, on the day of Jumu'ah that the last hour will be established. The Prophet Ali also mentioned in another narration that it's the best day in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because it's the day of congregation. It's the day in which the Muslims gather. They gather for what? They gather for uh, Jumu'ah. They gather for, the, this is the weekly gathering of the Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu idha nudiya lis salati min yawm al-jumu'ati fasa'u ila dhikrillah wadhru al-bayr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when the call of Jumu'ah is made, when the time of Jumu'ah comes, then what? Hasten to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I.e. hasten towards the, um, the, the, the khutbah of Jumu'ah, the reminder of Jumu'ah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's dhikr is made. Um, and also we find in the, the narrations, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he said that the, from one Jumu'ah to the next, whatever is committed in terms of minor sins between one Jumu'ah to the next Jumu'ah is forgiven. By virtue of you coming to Jumu'ah and praying Jumu'ah and establishing the Jumu'ah, and then the next Jumu'ah you come back and again you're here for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever from the minor sins are committed in between are forgiven. As long as you avoid the major sins. As long as you avoid the major sins. And these are of course opportunities and rahmah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to the believers. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimullah he said about the Friday prayer. He said it's one of the most important obligations in Islam. Yes, and it's one of the greatest gatherings of the Muslims. When the Muslims gather together, and you, subhanAllah, you find masajid across the globe, full to the brim, people praying outside. Why has everyone come together to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And as I said, um, Jumu'ah begins on the night, the night preceding. So Jumu'ah begins when? After Maghrib on the Thursday. So on the Thursday after Maghrib, you've entered into Jumu'ah. And there are of course certain actions that we're recommended to do on the day of Jumu'ah or the night of Jumu'ah. Uh, and Jumu'ah should not be like every other day. You know, when we understand the fadl and the virtue and the reward that Jumu'ah contains, it shouldn't be like every other day. The only difference being is we come to the masjid for 15 minutes and that's it. The rest is all the same. No, we should understand that this is an important day. This is a day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given great favor over, uh, great favor to. So what are some of the actions? The first action, which as I said, we can begin from after Maghrib on the Thursday, is to recite Surah Al-Kahf. Yes, and we mentioned Surah Al-Kahf a few reminders ago when we talked about Surah Al-Kahf and the, the different fitan, the different trials and the four different stories and how it's a weekly reminder for you and I about the different trials that we will face in life when it comes to our faith, when it comes to wealth, when it comes to knowledge, when it comes to power, etc. So this is a weekly reminder when we recite Surah Al-Kahf about the different trials that we will face in life and how to overcome those trials and how to um, combat those trials. So Surah Al-Kahf is something that we should recite. The Prophet ﷺ is reported that he said in this discussion on the hadith that the one who recites Surah Al-Kahf on the Jumu'ah that there will be a light that emanates between one Jumu'ah and the next. And some of the scholars said, what's the meaning of this light? 
that's going to emanate from one Jum'ah to the next, meaning it's a protection from one Jum'ah to the next. So that's the first thing. The second thing, my dear brothers and sisters, is to establish and to pray Salatul Fajr in Jama'ah on Friday morning. Why? Because the Prophet Wasallam in the hadith narrated by Ibn Umar عنhuma, he said that the best prayer the best prayer before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Fajr prayer in congregation on a Friday. The Fajr prayer in congregation on the Friday. You know, mashallah, it's beautiful to see the masjid full for Taraweeh. Yes, and, and Taraweeh is a sunnah. Okay, it's not a fard prayer. But mashallah, brothers and sisters are making effort to come and exerting themselves. But my dear brothers and sisters, what's more rewarding and what's more valued with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that you make an effort to come for the Fajr prayer. Especially on the day of Jum'ah, my dear brothers and sisters. The third thing that we should do on the Friday is plenty of dua. Plenty of dua. Yes, throughout the day we should be making dua. But in particular, the Prophet ﷺ, he talked about a, a, an hour or a time period on Jum'ah in which duas are answered. Yes, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the du'as. That a du'a will not be made except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer that du'a. What time period is this? When is this? Many of the scholars said it's between Asr and Maghrib or just before Maghrib. That's a time when we should be making plenty of du'a, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever it is you need in life, whatever difficulty you're going through, whatever uh, needs you have, that's the time to ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what is given on the day of Jum'ah. Again, showing us the virtue of Jum'ah. And the last thing that I want to mention when it comes to actions that we should do on Jum'ah is to send plenty of salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by saying Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Muhammad throughout the night of Jum'ah and the day of Jum'ah this should be constant on our tongues yes in the hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he spoke about the best of days being Friday and he mentioned certain characteristics of Friday. It's the day that um, Adam was created and it's the day he died, etc. And then towards the middle of the hadith, he said, so send great deal of blessings upon me. Yes, i.e. on the Friday, for your blessings will be shown to me. Your uh, salawat will be shown to me. And we know from the ayah, inna Allah wa malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi. That indeed Allah and his angels send salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu So this is something we should constantly be doing. It should be on our tongue throughout the night and the day of Jum'ah Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Muhammad yeah constantly now there are certain etiquettes my dear brothers and sisters that I want to finish on when it comes to the Jum'ah prayer itself and the day of Jum'ah unfortunately we find that when it comes to Jum'ah many of us um, are not uh, aware of these etiquettes and these adab and when we're not aware of these etiquettes and these adab we miss out on great reward and actually um, we do not take full advantage of the day of Jum'ah first and foremost is to perform the ghusl yes on the day of Jum'ah the Prophet ﷺ, he said uh, that if the day of Jum'ah you, you see the day of Jum'ah then what should you do you should perform ghusl yes first and foremost wearing clean clothes Yes, applying itar. You're coming to the house of Allah with the gathering with the Muslims. This is a beautiful gathering. Yes, so wearing your best of clothes or the clean clothes, smelling nice. It's not befitting that you, you know, just turn up to the masjid and you throw whatever you've got at home on and khalas and you no problem. No. And you make that extra effort on the day of Jum'ah. Going early, my dear brothers and sisters, a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim in which the Prophet والسلام, he talks about the angels. And he said that on the day of Jum'ah, that وَقَفَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ عَلَى بَابِ الْمَسْجِدِ That the angels, they stand at the doors of the masjid. Okay, on the day of Jum'ah. And they write down the names of those who are coming in. And the, in the hadith it mentions that the one who comes early in the first hour, i.e. who comes early, he will, uh, it's as if he sacrificed a camel for the one who comes early. And then the one who comes later and later is less and less in reward. Until the end, the one who comes right at the end, yeah, he gets, it's like he sacrificed an egg. Meaning the reward is not like coming early. This is an incentive for us to come early to Jum'ah. And then the hadith mentions that um, when the Imam stands on the mimbar and begins the sermon, the angels, they close the scrolls and they sit and listen to the khutbah. 
Yes, so making sure you come early, my dear brothers and sisters. Not coming last minute just before uh, the iqamah is made and think we've caught Juma. I know. And you need to be here before the khutbah starts. So that's coming early. Also walking to uh, the masjid. The Prophet والسلام, he mentioned in the hadith, and listen to this hadith very carefully. He said that whoever does the ghusl on Friday cleanses himself, sets out early. Okay, comes close to the Imam and listens and is quiet, keeps quiet for every step he takes. For every step he takes, he will have the reward of fasting and praying Qiyam, yes, for one year. For every step he takes. And the ulama, when they looked at this hadith, for example, Ibn Hajar al Haytami, one of the great Shafi scholars, he said that there's nothing in the Sunnah, any a Sahih report, greater in reward than this. And if for every step you take, and those who live locally, we should make the effort to walk it to Jumu'ah. Yes, for every step there's that famous clip of an old Arab gentleman, in, I think it was in, somewhere in the Arab world, he's walking to Jumu'ah, and somebody pulls over next to him, and he says, get in, I'll take you. And he says, no. He says, I'm going to walk, why? And then he narrates this hadith. That for every step, subhanAllah, you're getting the reward of Qiyam and fasting for one year. Um, also, and lastly, uh, I'll finish on this, my dear brothers and sisters, is that when it comes to the khutbah itself, yes, there are certain etiquettes. There should be no talking during the khutbah. When the khatib is on the, the member and he's delivering the khutbah, there is no talking. Where do we get this from? Abu Darda, he reports that the Prophet والسلام, was one day sat on the pulpit and he was addressing the people. And he recited a verse. So Ubay ibn Ka'b was sat next to me. This is Abu Darda narrating the hadith. He says, he was sat next to me. So I said to him, O Ubay, when was this verse revealed? During the khutbah, he's asking this question. He says, Ubay refused to speak to me. Okay, so I asked him again and he refused to speak to me until the Prophet ﷺ came down from the member. And then Ubay said to me, Ubay said, who was refusing to speak, you have gained nothing from your Juma except idle talk. Except idle talk. He said when the Prophet ﷺ finished the prayer, he said, I went and told him. Abu Darda is saying, I went and told him. And he said that Ubay is right. Ubay is right. When you hear the Imam speaking, then keep quiet and listen attentively until he finishes. It's not permissible for you to be speaking whilst the khutbah is going on. To the extent that you don't even return the salam of somebody who gives salam to you whilst the khutbah is going on. Your focus should be directed towards the khatib. Yes, it shouldn't be that subhanAllah, like many people, they think they'll sit down in the khutbah, they'll pull the phone out, let me just check what's going on in Instagram, TikTok, I'll check my emails now. No. And you're in the khutbah. This is not a time for these things. For 15 minutes, you need to focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to focus on what's being said. So these are some adab, some etiquettes for us to bear in mind. The day of Jummah is a blessed day. We take full advantage of it, increase in our a'mal, increase in our salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Pay attention to these adab and etiquettes when it comes to the khutbah itself. Not speaking, not going on your phone, etc, etc. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gives us tawfiq. Wa akhiru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.